طيب let's get started in today's lecture we are going to continue our discussion regarding the, the, the cement production and last time uh, we said that uh, here we can see uh, the raw materials uh, uh, component of the cement uh, before we put the cement into the clay, we have the lime represent the largest portion. We have the silica represent the second largest portion. And we have alumina and we have iron oxide and other oxides. And after the clay, we have four main compounds. We have uh, uh, the tricalcium silicate, C sub 3S. We have the decalcium. Uh, we have the decalcium silicate, C sub 2S. We have the tricalcium aluminate. C sub 3A, and we have tetracalcium aluminum free to uh, C sub 4AF. We need to talk about the roles of each uh, of those uh, uh, compound. First, let's start with the uh, 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 tricalcium silicate, C sub 3S. So C sub 3S is going to hydrate and harden rapidly and is largely, uh, largely responsible for initial set and early uh, strength. We discussed the initial fit, uh, and we said that the uh, uh, the uh, the cement is going to uh, uh, move from the uh, elastic uh, state uh, to the solid state, and the uh, C sub 3A is going to be responsible for that, and also is going to be responsible for the early strength. And the early strength of the cement is higher with increased percentage of C sub 3S. So if I want to increase the early strength of the cement, I'm going to increase the value of C sub 3 S. And also the C sub 2 S, it's like opposite to C sub 3 uh, S. The C sub 2 S is going to hydrate and harden slowly. So while C sub, uh, C sub 3 S is going to uh, hydrate rapidly, this one is going to hydrate and harden slowly. And this one contributes largely to strength increase and at ages beyond one week so the strength that is going to be gained after one week c sub 2 s is going to be responsible for that while c sub 3 s is going to be responsible for the early strength and uh, number three we have c sub 3 a uh, tricalcium aluminate uh, this compound is going to release or liberate a large amount of heat during the first few days of hydration and hardening. So when the water comes into contact with the cement, uh, uh, amount of heat is going to be released. And that mainly because of C sub 3A. And also, like uh, C sub 3S, C sub 3A is going to contribute slightly to early strength development. So C sub 3S and C sub 3A, both of them, they are contribute to the early strength development. And remember, remember that we said that we are going to uh, add the gypsum uh, to, to the uh, cement clinger in order to regulate the setting time. The gypsum, we add the gypsum exactly for the C sub 3A. Because the hydration of C sub 3A uh, is going to be quick. So mainly we add the gypsum to regulate the C sub 3A. And the cements with a low percentage of C sub 3A are especially resistant to soils and waters containing sulfates. So if, if we are going to decrease the amount of C sub 3A, then your cement is going to have the ability to resist the sulfates. Because many of the uh, uh, structure is going to be built uh, inside the uh, soil or sometimes we are going to build drainage structures so in case you have drainage structure uh, uh, the water uh, containing sulfate is going to be on contact with the uh, cement so if you decrease the amount of uh, uh, C sub 3A the cement is going to have a resistance uh, again, is the sulfate. And finally, uh, C sub 4 AF, this one here does not play any significant role on hydration. So 
this has nothing to do with hydration. So we need to focus on C sub 3S, C sub 2S, and C sub 3A. C sub 3S, this one hydrates uh, rapidly and uh, is going to be responsible for the initial set and L strength. C sub 2S hydrates and hardens slowly and is going to be contributed for the strength beyond one week, while C sub 3A is going to release a, a large amount and also contribute slightly to early strength. And we add the gypsum especially for C sub 3A to, to regulate the hydration rate. And uh, this, the, if we decrease the, the amount of C sub 3A, the cement will going to have the ability to resist uh, the sulfates inside the soil and the water. Uh, also, we need to talk about the fineness of the uh, uh, cement. So how much fineness do you want in our cement? Uh, remember, we discussed the concept that uh, if the, uh, uh, the size of the uh, cement or any particle, if the size is going to be smaller, it means that the uh, surface is going to be larger, right? We discussed this uh, concept in, in aggregate. So the same uh, concept is going to be applied here. So if you are going to uh, uh, increase uh, or if you are going to uh, uh, have smaller particles, it means that the surface, the, the surface area is going to be larger. And when we talk about the hydration, the, the hydration is going to start at the surface of the cement particles. The hydration is going to start at the surface of the cement particle. So if, you're, if you're, your cement is finer, that means the surface area is going to be larger. And as a result, the hydration is going to be faster. Okay? So if you are going to have a cement with a finer particle, the hydration is going to be faster. Therefore, finer material results in faster strength development and a greater initial heat of hydration. We, share, we, say, we, we mentioned that when the water come in contact with the cement, uh, hydration process is going to take place, and also uh, a heat is going to be released uh, as a result of this process. So if the uh, cement have a finer materials, the uh, strength gain is going to be faster, and the uh, initial heat of hydration is going to be larger and greater. And if we are going to increase the fineness beyond the requirement for the type of the cement, that is going to increase the production costs because you need uh, machines that have the ability uh, to produce a finer material and that is going to cost you and if you are going to increase the fineness beyond the requirements for a certain type that is going to be dangerous to the quality of the concrete so you need to understand uh, the uh, the effect of the fineness on the properties of the concrete. The main point is the finer the, uh, the, the cement, the, the, the faster the strength development and the greater initial heat of hydration. Also, it's very important to understand the specific gravity of the uh, uh, cement because later on, when we are going to uh, learn how to uh, develop concrete mix, uh, especially, especially the volume method, we need to know the specific gravity of the cement in order to determine uh, the uh, sand in particular. So uh, the specific gravity of the cement without voids between particles is about 3.15. And that it could be uh, determined according to ASTIM C188. Remember everything uh, you need to test. Uh, it should be according to uh, ASTIM standard and ASTIM is American system of testing uh, materials so we are not going to test uh, uh, randomly we have a standard and most of the uh, test here is going to be uh, performed according to ASTIM standard and also we, cut, we, we can uh, determine the uh, density of the bulk uh, cement the density of the bulk cement, that means uh, uh, the voids going to be included. 
and that value is going to vary considerably depending on how it handle and stored. So the specific, we know the value of the specific gravity of the cement, while the density of the bulk cement is going to vary uh, considerably depends on how we are going to handle and store the uh, cement. Uh, we uh, uh, have a little information about the hydration. Here we are going to talk about the hydration in uh, greater details. Uh, the hydration is defined by the chemical reaction between the cement particles and the water. So the chemical reaction between the water and the cement, we call this hydration. And as a result of the hydration, we are going to have heat of hydration. So heat of hydration is the heat generated when cement and water react. And that amount of heat uh, of hydration depends on C sub 3A and C sub 3S. So C sub 3A and C sub 3S, they are primarily responsible for high heat evolution. Remember here, we, we, we talked about the role of C sub 3A. This one liberate, liberate a large amount of heat. And this one also, because uh, it's responsible for early strings, also this one is going to contribute for the uh, uh, high heat of uh, hydration. So the amount of C sub 3A and C sub 3S is going to determine how much heat of hydration is going to be released. Also, we have other factors contributed to the heat of hydration, like the fineness. We discussed the uh, fineness here. We say that the uh, finer uh, material results in, in faster strings and greater initial heat of hydration. So this one contributed to the uh, increase the heat of hydration. The cement content, of course, if I'm going to increase the amount of the cement, the heat of hydration is going to be increased as, as well. And also the curing temperature is going to uh, increase the heat of hydration. The curing process, uh, it means that I'm going to maintain a certain amount of heat and moisture for uh, a specific period of time and that is going to increase uh, the strength of the uh, concrete. So if you are going to increase the curing temperature, that is going to increase the heat of hydration as well. And the finest, it's very important point to understand this. And I'm, I always ask about this in exam. Finest uh, of the cement can affect the rate of heat development but not the total amount of heat liberated. So if the uh, particles are finer, it means that the rate of heat development is going to be faster, but the total amount of heat liberated is going to be the same. Okay, so the finest is going to affect the ra rate of heat development, not the total amount of heat liberated. So the total amount whether your uh, cement particle is finer or coarser, uh, the total amount is going to be the same, while the rate of heat of development is going to be faster uh, for the uh, finer uh, particles. And also the uh, heat of gener uh, generated due, uh, due to the hydration is going to be larger at the uh, early day ages or early days. So at the first days, the amount uh, released because of the hydration is going to be uh, larger. And the, a large amount of heat evolves within the first three days. With the greatest rate of heat liberation usually occur within the first 24 hours. So the heat generate is going to be larger at the early days, especially at the, 20, uh, the first 24 hours. Also, we need to talk about the properties of hydrated cement. Now, uh, hydrated cement, that means we mix the water with the cement. And in order to uh, uh, study the uh, properties of hydrated cement, uh, we need to either have cement paste or mortar. If it's cement paste, that means I have a water plus the cement. If it's mortar, it means that I have a paste plus the sand. 
So the uh, 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 most important property, uh, we have the setting, and also we have the compressive string. First, let's look at the setting. So what does it mean by setting of the hydrated cement? Settings refer to stiffness, to stiffening of the cement paste, or the change from plastic state to solid state. When I add water to the cement, uh, the cement is going to be in plastic state, right? But after a while, the cement is going to uh, uh, convert to a solid state. So the process uh, of changing between the uh, plastic state to a solid state, we call this uh, uh, stiffening. And also, we should not uh, confuse the uh, uh, stiffening or the setting with the hardening. We have the setting and we have the hardening. The hardening refers to the strength gain in a set, uh, a cement paste. For example, here I have a solid state and here also I have a solid state. But uh, in the beginning, the strength is going to be weaker. Let's say that. Uh, at, uh, after three days, the strength here is 10 megapascal. But after seven days, it's going to be, let's say, 15 megapascal. So this, the strength here increased. And we call this hardening. So hardening refers to strength gain in a set cement paste. While the setting refers to the uh, change from plastic state to solid state. So we should not confuse the uh, setting with the hardening. And in order to determine the setting time, how much time the cement is going to, to take to change from the plastic state to solid state, we are, we are going to use the V-cut apparatus, this apparatus here. So in the lab, in lab two, we perform uh, 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 the uh, uh, setting time test in order first to know cons uh, the cement consistency and also in order to determine the initial set and the final set. So this device, it has a blunger here and it has needle. We use the blunger in order to determine the uh, consist consistence consistency of the cement and we use the needle here in order to determine the uh, setting time. So the setting is usually described by two levels. We have the initial set and we have the final set. So what is the difference between the initial set and the final set? The uh, initial setting time is a time from the instant at which water is added to the cement until the paste ceases to fluid, to fluid and uh, plastic. So it means that I'm going to add the water I'm going to add the water here, the cement, and uh, when I put the water with the cement, the cement it has the ability in order to be uh, bumped from one point to another. So I can easily uh, deal with the uh, uh, cement, okay? But after a time, uh, it's going to be difficult to deal with the with the uh, cement itself, even though the uh, cement is not changed completely to a solid state. So once you uh, lost the ability to uh, 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 bump the concrete from one point to another, that means uh, uh, you finish the uh, initial setting time stage. And we are going to do this using the VCAT apparatus. In the VCAT apparatus, we have a definition for the initial setting time. Remember uh, the VCAT apparatus, we have this conical. In the, 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 the height of that conical is about 50 millimeter. When I uh, release the needle inside the uh, cement paste, when that needle became, uh, uh, is going to penetrate to uh, uh, 25 millimeter inside the cement paste, that the point when we say that we, we reached the initial setting time. 
So if I uh, made uh, a semen paste, and after a certain time, if I'm going to insert the needle, and the penetration became uh, about 25 millimeter from the bottom of that mold, special mold here, then it means that this is the initial setting time. It means that after that time, it's difficult to uh, deal with the uh, cement paste. And also we have the final setting time. The final setting time is a time required for the paste to acquire a certain degree of hardness. So uh, after the setting time, uh, the the, uh, the cement paste is going to be uh, to, to change from uh, plastic state to solid state, which means that when I'm going to release the uh, needle, the needle is not going to penetrate inside the cement paste. It's going to make like a scratch, but it's not going to penetrate inside the cement paste. We call this final setting time. So we have initial setting time and we have final setting time. So why initial time is important? Because the cement paste uh, is a component of the concrete, right? And we are going to deliver the concrete from the job site, uh, from the uh, 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 concrete station to the job site. So we have a time uh, between uh, the, 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 during the delivery. So we need to make sure that when the concrete arrived at the job site, the concrete has ability to be casted and to be vibrated because we need to cast uh, the cement. So if the cement lost the uh, ability to be casted, that means the initial setting time is finished. Even though the uh, cement uh, did not change to, in, into the uh, solid state. And the final setting time, it means that the concrete reached the solid state. So the ASTIM C150 prescribed an, a minimum initial setting time of 60 minutes. So the setting time should not be less than one hour. If the setting, ti setting time is, is less than one hour, you need to reject the cement because that is going to cause a problem. We need to have uh, a good time uh, between mixing the cement and casting the cement. And also the maximum uh, final setting time of 10 hours. So the uh, uh, final setting time should not be more than 10 hours. If it's more than 10 hours, you need to reject the Portland cement. Those are standards here in order to help me using the cement uh, in effective way. So, uh, and of course, we use the cement paste in order to produce concrete. Uh, if I'm going to have cement paste plus the aggregates, then I'm going to have the concrete. Then you need to handle the concrete, you need to place the concrete, you need to cast the concrete, and also you need to vibrate the concrete. All of these processes should complete it before the initial set. So we need to finish the handling, the casting, the placing, and the vibrating of the concrete before the initial set. And then you have the finishing process. The finishing process should be done between the initial and the final uh, setting time. Then after the uh, uh, final set, that now the concrete completely uh, changed to solid state, then we are going to start the curing process. The curing process, it means that I'm going to maintain a certain amount of heat and uh, of water and moisture so that the hydration process is going to continue. If the hydration process is going to continue, that means uh, the strength is going to increase as well. And the gypsum in the cement regulates the setting time. The gypsum regulates the setting time. So without the gypsum, the setting time here is going to be less than one hour. And the setting time also is affected by the cement fineness and the water cement ratio and also by the admixtures.
Now also it's important to talk about the compressive strings of the mortar. So here we discuss the setting time. And in order to determine the setting time, we are going to use a cement paste. And in order to determine the compressive string, we are going to uh, use a mortar. So here, we are going to use a mortar in order to assess the compressive strings uh, uh, of the cement. So how we are going to uh, determine the compressive strings of the cement? We are going to use a mortar in order to assess the compressive strings. We are going to use uh, 50 millimeter cubes. So the dimension of that uh, cube is 50 by 50 by 50. And uh, uh, we are going to, first we are going to uh, make mortar. We are going to have cement plus water plus sand. Then we are going to cast the mortar inside those molds here. And uh, after the final set, we are going to demold uh, the uh, specimen. And then we are going to apply a force here, compressive uh, uh, strength to the uh, specimen until failure. Then we are going to uh, uh, determine the uh, uh, stress by dividing the force over the area. So the mortar is prepared with cement, water, and standard sand, and the minimum compressive strength value are specified by the ASTEM for different cement type at different ages. So we have standard values for different type of cement. We are going to compare those values with the standard values uh, to determine whether uh, my cement is up to standard or not. Uh, we need to understand the relation between the water amount and the cement content. We need the water for the hydration process, right? But the, if I'm going to increase the amount of the water beyond the hydration uh, uh, purposes, then the workability of the uh, 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 cement is going to be better. Workability, it means that uh, how easily I can move the aggregate from one point to another. We call this a uh, workability. So if I'm going to increase the water more than the hydration uh, uh, purposes, then the workability is going to uh, be better. But if I'm going to increase the water beyond the hydration uh, uh, level, I'm going to have a detrimental effect on my concrete. So water needed for hydration is going to be between 0.22 and 0.25. The water over the cement ratio should be within uh, this range. Extra water, that means I'm going to improve the workability. And if you are going to increase the amount of the water, it means that the voids inside your, your uh, cement is going to be uh, greater. And the, if the voids is going to be increased, that means the strength is going to be decreased. If you increase the amount of the water beyond the hydration level, then the strength is going to be decreased because uh, the uh, uh, percentage of the voids is going to be increased as well. And also the, the durability is going to be decreased. The concrete is not going to live for a uh, 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 very long time. And also you are going to uh, uh, see decrease in between the successive layers of the uh, cement. And also the, if you are going to uh, uh, use steel bars, the bond between the concrete and the rebar is going to be decreased. And also you are going to increase the permeability, which means that uh, any water containing uh, sulfate acid can easily get inside your concrete. And also that is going to increase the volume change from wetting and drying because, uh, because of the amount of the increased water. In this diagram here, we can see the relation between the water cement ratio and the compressive strength. So in, N, in X axis, we have the water cement ratio, and in Y axis, we have the compressive strength. Here we have uh, the uh, value of the compressive strength in a range. So here I have the compressive strength. Uh, let's say that I use a water cement ratio of 0 
So the compressive strength is going to have a range between 30 and 50. But as I uh, increase the uh, uh, water cement ratio, what will happen to the compressive strength is going to decrease. So it's not recommended to increase the water cement ratio because that is going to decrease the strength. But if you increase the water cement ratio, that means the workability is going to be better. But you are going to lose all of these uh, advantages. Now let's talk about the uh, types of Portland cement. Uh, earlier, I mentioned uh, that we have five types of uh, Portland cement. So according to the ASTIMS U150, we have uh, five standard types of Portland cement from uh, uh, type one through type five. So uh, type one is the normal Portland cement. And we use this for the general purposes. As long as we don't have any special cases, we are going to use cement type one. And also we have cement type two, which is a moderate sulfate uh, resistance. And we are going to use this uh, type of cement uh, in case that we have, or we are expected to have a sulfate attack, moderate sulfate attack. And we have a cement type 3, uh, which is high early strength. We use this one uh, in case that I need to finish uh, uh, the construction of a certain structure in a shorter time. And we have cement type 4, which is the low heat of hydration. So this one here, remember we talk about the heat of hydration. So if I'm going to use this type, type number four, uh, the uh, heat release is going to be lower. And uh, why this is important? Because sometimes you don't want uh, a high rate of heat of hydration because that is going to cause uh, thermal cracks. So in such cases, it's better to use cement type four. We have cement type five, which is a high sulfate resistance. This one is similar to that one, except here we are expected to have a high sulfate attack. So let's see each and every one of those types. Let's start with type one, which is the uh, uh, general purposes cement. We use this for the different uh, uh, types of cements. For, for example, for making pavement, floors, reinforced concrete, building, bridges, tanks, and so on. So this one is going to use for different type of structures. Uh, unless you don't have special properties, then we are going to use cement type one. For example, if you are going to uh, expect sulfate attack from soil and water, uh, we are not going to use cement type one. We have also cement type 2, which is a moderate sulfate resistance. Uh, we use this where precaution against moderate sulfate attack is expected. For example, we have the dronic structure. In the dronic structure, uh, we may, it may be subjected to a, a, a moderate sulfate concentration from the ground water. So the, the ground water may is going uh, to contain sulfate and how we how we can uh, uh, produce a cement with a moderate sulfate resistance remember we talk about c sub 3a we say that if you are going to decrease the amount of c sub 3a uh, we are going to enhance the resistance to sulfate attack so in order to produce a cement with a moderate sulfate attack the, uh, uh, the percentage of the uh, 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 tetracalcium aluminate should not, uh, should not uh, be more than 8%. So as long as the, uh, the value of C sub 3A uh, is less than 8%, then the cement is going to develop uh, a moderate resistance to the uh, sulfate attack. 
and it usually generates less heat of hydration since we are going to limit the amount of seeds of 3A at a lower rate than type 1 cement and therefore it can be used in a mass structure so this one also it could be used in mass structure because in mass structure uh, we are going to expect it to have uh, a, a high rate of hydration so since we are going to limit the amount of seeds of 3a that means uh, we are going to have less heat of hydration so it could also be used in a mass structure because the uh, uh, rate of heat is going to be lower than type 1 and because of the uh, due to the less heat generated it can be preferred in hot weather because in hot weather the temperature is going to be high and uh, if you are going to have also a high heat of hydration that is going to cause a lot of problem also we have cement type 3 the high early strength this one is chemically and physically similar to type 1 so there is no difference between uh, cement type 3 and cement type 1 except that the particles of uh, uh, cement type 3 has been ground finer so the particles of uh, cement type 3 uh, uh, finer than uh, cement type 1 but physically and chemically they are identical and because of the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the particles is finer than type 1 that means it's going to provide uh, uh, high L strings at an early period usually uh, a week or less so this one is going to be useful when forms needed to be removed as soon as possible or when the structure must be put in service quickly so if you are going to if you are planning to finish uh, your structure uh, quickly uh, it's good to use cement type 3 and also this one is preferred in cold weather for reduction in the curing period uh, the uh, cement type 4 we have the low heat of hydration so we are going to use this type where the rate and the amount of heat generated from hydration must be minimized especially for a uh, mass concrete structure so for example in order to uh, construct a dam you are going to put a large amount of concrete we call this massive concrete structure because we put many layers of concrete here uh, the heat of hydration is not going to be released outside and as a result the temperature of the concrete is going to be increased and we don't want that because thermal cracking, uh, cracking is going to develop here for, so for a structure like this one here uh, the rate and the amount of heat generated from hydration must be minimized and in, the, in, in, in this case, it's suitable to use uh, cement type 4, which is the low heat of hydration. So the uh, hydration, uh, the, uh, the heat of hydration released is going to be uh, as minimum as possible. And of course, the, uh, the strings is going to develop at a lower rate. It's not going to be within one week or, or so. So it takes a longer time than the uh, standard uh, uh, cement so this one is suitable in massive concrete structure such as large gravity dams where temperature rise resulting from heat generated during hardening and must be minimized to control the concrete cracking uh, finally here we have cement type 5 which is a high sulfate resistance and we are going to use this one when the concrete is exposed to severe sulfate, uh, uh, sulfate action and uh, of course from the soil and the ground water because the soil and ground water sometimes they may have high sulfate content and how to achieve that we are going to limit, uh, limit the content of C sub 3A so the, the uh, amount of C sub 3A should be less than 4% and also you need to remember that uh, uh, type 4 is not resistant to acids and other highly cor uh, corrosive substance this one is only is going to be uh, uh, resistant to sulfate uh, attack 
highly sulfate attack. So uh, next time I'm going to talk about the, the difference in uh, uh, chemical compounds between the different types of cement. I'm going to stop here. Next time I'm going to pick up from this point. Do you have any questions?